hello everyone. Um, I didn't really expect to make this video today, but um, I'm going to take another try at it. Um, if you watched my meditation from earlier today, um, it was the sunrise DNA activation meditation and I had tried to make this video yesterday, um, but it just didn't work and come out right. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen this time. We'll see. <laughs> um, I think a lot of this last year, if you are a new subscriber, you may or may not be aware that um, for the last year, in which time I was also pregnant, I had alpha-gal syndrome. Um, it's something that you get bit by a tick and it can make you allergic to mammal products. And my case, because of being pregnant, was pretty extreme. And I've done acupuncture several times and I changed providers and did acupuncture again. And uh, I have been able to include dairy back into my diet which is huge for me and uh, I have major props for people that uh, make the choice to say that they want to go dairy free or whatever there's lots of different lifestyle choices that can be amazing um, and when you take the choice component out it just can definitely compound it and make it harder and my relationship with food probably my entire life was a little um, difficult. Um, you know, I, I know the importance of meals for families and um, togetherness. Like, we do a lot of things around food. It's a very important part of our lives. And yet, I would say the majority of the time that I had eaten food up through this last year, I looked at food um, in a very hateful, maybe, might be the right word. Um, I just, I, I didn't have a good relationship with food. I like food. I didn't enjoy food. I wouldn't allow myself to enjoy it. Um, and this past week, as I was reincorporating dairy back into my diet, um, my husband made me fettuccine alfredo. And this is something that he made um, on one of our first dates, the first time he ever cooked for me. That was the meal that he cooked for me. And it was a, it was and is a very important dish to me. Um, he makes it uh, the very indulgent way with lots of heavy cream and things like that, even better than like a restaurant will use a bechamel sauce and it's just not the same. His is always better. <laughs> and no, I'm not biased. <laughs> um, but that was literally a dish that I had come to terms with that I might never enjoy in its full grandeur and nature again. And that was difficult, but when I was able to take those first bites this past week of that food, it not only flooded me with all of the memories, because it's not just that first meal, it's all the meals after. It's me making that meal. It's uh, learning how to make that meal. It's making it for our children and our family as a whole. And then having that kind of ripped away. And when I took those bites, I was 
so, so grateful for those bites and for eating. And I was literally just crying tears of joy because I really didn't think, you know, I hoped that I would be able to have it again, but I didn't know. And here I was having this food again that, you know, was very important to me. And it, it really got me to thinking, this is not how I view food. This is not, and this is just, and the crazy thing is, this is one component of my life, but this illness has done this in so many different facets of my life and areas of my life. And so we're talking about food, but we're not just talking about food. Um, but for me, with this food, it made me start questioning, why have I approached food the way I have? And I had to, you know, dig deep into my memories and myself. And it's funny, there's some things that I'll do that and it's quick. And then there's other things that I mull over for days. And it was like, this epiphany was just right there waiting to come out. And that all of this illness, all of it was worth it to get to this point in this moment. And, and that's why if you're at the beginning and you're like, show it to me, give it to me universe. I, you know, I'm ready for whatever's next. And then you might fall into this deep moment that you're stuck at the bottom of a well and you're like, this sucks, this blows, I take it all back universe. And then you get to this, what is this trying to show me and teach me? I am so grateful that I had my own inklings, but that I had people in my life that were like, pointing me and navigating me and that got me going and once I had that nudge I was able to keep it going and keep that momentum going and that was so amazing and now here I am and I'm able to reflect back on it because I, I had been trying to have this better relationship with food and with myself my self-esteem and it really came down to realizing that when I take a bite of food, or when I did a year or two ago, I didn't love every bite. I didn't sit there and go, I'm so grateful for this bite. I love this bite. I can't wait for the next bite. I am just going to savor and enjoy every second of this bite and then joyfully look forward to the next one. A lot of times I would look at it and go, oh, this is really good, but it's not good for me. Oh, there's so many calories in this bite. And when I started thinking about it, I'm like, what was the point? What was the shift where I started looking at food as a child does, or most children do, where it's awesome, it's nutritious, it tastes good, it's good for me. And how did that shift? And I know how that happened, and it's not anything I need to go into great detail here, because I know the people that contributed to that were dealing with their own trauma, they're dealing with their own dialogue in their head. and they were really doing the best that they could at the time. And so there's a level of forgiveness that it's, it's okay. I get it because here I am as a parent now and I understand, I understand that. Um, and not all of these people were just you know, my parents or anything. There's, you know, other very well-meaning family and friends over the years that have all contributed to this. And really, that's 
that can make up us, and it often does, but this last year, and even the years previous, um, since I would say about 2020, these last few years have been very much about shedding what's not mine. And I look at it this way, this illness may have done in one year what may have taken 10 or 20 naturally occurring. Is it hard? Yes. Has it been? Yes. Was it worth it? Absolutely fucking yes, yes, yes. I would do it all again. And you're going, but why? Like, why learn that accelerated way? And sometimes you just, like, that's what my soul or that's what myself needed was to get up to this point right now where I can look at a bite of food and be grateful. And part of what also helped me go through and realize this was my husband, my husband and I eat the same things. Um, and we have for quite a while. And my, my husband doesn't look at food the way that I look at food at all. He looks at it as it's it fills you up, it tastes good, it's there. It's not a big deal. But he didn't have all that layering on him. And my husband is six foot tall, 180 pounds, maybe wet. <laughs> and um, I really feel like that wor those words and the internal dialogue that we're giving to ourselves that matters. If before every bite of food, I am thinking and I am vibrating into that food, you are bad for me. I wish I didn't have to eat. I don't, I don't like this. I, I like it, but I feel guilty about liking it. it. If that's in every single bite that we take, that's going in and that's what's nourishing our bodies and that's what our result is. And so, this is just a huge epiphany of the self-love that has come and come and come through the course of this last year, and it's another building up, and it's a, it's a boundary within myself. Like, no, I'm not going to talk to myself and what I'm bringing into my body, I'm not going to talk about that in that manner. I'm going to say this is delicious, I love it, I savor it, because I love me and I savor me and I want to enjoy it, I want to, this is part of being human, food is part of being human, it's part of this experience, it's something that we do together and we show our love, we can put love literally into food and people eat it up and they have that love in them, that's awesome, those are the things that I want to take and do. I don't want to give anybody something that I'm feeling guilty or, ugh, you know, not good enough. I shouldn't eat that type of thing. And it's not, and the crazy thing is, it's not just food. It's just a really good example. It's, there's so many other things. Even just... Talking, my, my internal dialogue and the person that has been with me from the moment that I realized I'm a person. Um, it's funny that that person doesn't age, isn't it? And um, I can still remember thinking and talking and being that person at three and four years old and then now still being that person and there's still there's experience there and there's this shedding of layers from all these other people that gave me their stuff and that person's still there talking and I've not been nice to that person because of all these other people and I've really worked hard on talking so much better to myself and that's even where the song from the meditation 
I've been singing that to myself. That's something I've sang to my children, every single one of them, as babies, as they're nursing and stuff like that, for 10 plus years. I don't know if I sing that song to my oldest, but definitely from my second on down. Um, and I, my oldest had her own songs, by the way. <laughs> um, but it's something that it would never have occurred to, occurred to me a few years ago to sing a song like that to myself because I would have looked at it as vain or uh, self-absorbed or something like that. And like, no. So, so what if I'm self-absorbed? What so what? What is the worst thing if I love for me? How is that bad? I don't I don't see it going off the deep end. I've I've gone off the deep end this way and literally hated myself. It's gonna take me a long time to get to the other extreme where it could be an issue, if that's even a possibility. Is it really? I don't know. But I can tell you that If you're at the beginning of something and you're like, universe, give it to me. I'm ready to go deeper and stuff. Be prepared because it's going to happen. And it's not going to happen at all like you think or ex expect, but that's okay. Because it's going to challenge you into deeper levels of yourself than you ever imagined. If you're in the middle of it, if you're down at the bottom of that well, and you're like, well, fuck, it gets better. But it's on you to get it better because you've got to do the work to get it better. And if you're at the end, we know it's going to cycle back through because there's always a, there's always, we're never completely learned or that's when it's time to go. We've learned everything that we can. And so there's going to be deeper and bigger meanings. But the appreciation for how far you've come and where you're at and the, the deeper new meanings that have come as the result of your path, those are amazing, beautiful things. And take time to just love and congratulate yourself on that. I am not who I was in 2020. I'm not who I was in 2021 or 2022, or 2023. I love the me at this moment. And yeah, there's probably a part of me that wishes I could have been this person 20 years ago. But I don't know that my path would have been the same. I don't know I don't know a lot of things and I it doesn't really matter it's irrelevant because this is where I am right now and I love where I am right now and I appreciate who I am right now I hope that I always look at these bites of food as loving wonderful bites of food um, it's even been interesting. I'll have like, I had a bowl of noodles and I ate them and I was just like, I'm full, I'm satisfied, but I enjoyed and I savored every single bite of it. Whereas a lot of times I'd be left hungry and wanting more and because I hadn't enjoyed it. And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. and. There may be people that are watching that are like, what are you talking about, lady? You're talking about food and savoring every bite and no. And, but there are going to be people that get it. And there are going to be people that are where I was a year ago that are in the middle of it and you're going through a really hard time and it gets better. It gets so much better, but you got to do the work. And if you're getting ready to just start the journey. There's going to be moments that just bring you to your knees 
and I keep thinking, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What do I, what am I supposed to be learning here? And sometimes that's not the course in the moment. Sometimes you have that epiphany, like where you're eating a bite of something and it's like it all comes together. But it might not be in your worst moment. It might be in a later moment and you just have to still go on the journey. So, yeah, I like that. You still have to go on the journey. But you got your free will going. And ultimately you decide what this journey looks like. Somebody else could have had Alpha Gal and um, completely shut down. And there may be people that say that I did shut down. But it's funny because I don't look at it that way. I went deep, deep within. This was an intense, like, this was an intense spiritual journey. There's not one single relationship that this illness hasn't touched and changed. And there's a lot of shit that I don't have time for anymore. I, I don't care. And is that sad? I guess. But it's okay too. I never thought I'd be okay, you know, being my husband and my kids and myself. And I'm surprising myself every day that I like it better here. I love the conversations we're having. And it's just all worth it. So if you can, look for the purpose. If there's no purpose, keep going. Shift your perspective. Think about what your higher self is telling you on which perspective. Uh, again, I said this in the meditation, but your higher self isn't going to criticize or talk down to you. They're your biggest cheerleader. They're literally, yes, yes, yes. Keep going. Keep going. Think about it. Unlayer it. You know, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. There's no judgment. Because we're not here to judge each other. We're here to experience and create. And I feel like now I get to do the fun part. Now I get to experience the joy of creating it things and enjoying them and I know I'll spiral down deeper and I enjoy the conversations with my children and with you all I enjoy the conversations with my husband and that life is so amazing and beautiful and just oh, I want to savor every bite I hope you have a great day